Hello and welcome to now let's play me game of six of winds of change before we start if you're interested in playing this game it's on steam so anyways on the last let's play we did the rest of the heart to hearts or final times or whatever i still find it funny that we accidentally got ourselves a third uh, romance partner he said he hated me and then proceeded to have some really good, uh, good link. Anyways, time to move on. I always hate that thing. Like, you want to continue the game. You always want more content, but you hate to end it. Oh, the same about Adastra. Like, mainline that game, and then when I got to the end, I had a bit of an emotional breakdown. I descend the stairs of the Grand Library, the crisp, spontane air assaulting me. I shiver and stand in disbelief of how uninviting the city seems to be. If this were I'd sit in the throne, we need to change a lot. Looking around the area, it appears that everyone is here. I try to take a head count just to make sure that's correct. This was the final attack. We need all of our might. I see Damic shaking hands with the created seers. Good, they helped us secure the library, and survived. They would be a valuable asset in holding the town square. It was nice to see their full potential finally realized. Using their visions, they outsmarted an entire horde of enemies. It was in this exact moment it was it was in this exact moment I knew they had made the right choice. When I make it to the bottom of the stairs, Damik waves me over. Our forces run around, seemingly taking an infinite number of tasks. Everybody is doing something. I made everything see seem more final. It made. I could tell that this was going to be the last time I see a lot of these people. There was no way we'd make it through with this without any casualties. Trying to tune out to the final preparations, I make my way to Damik. Good to see you, Monarch. I'm afraid there isn't much time to talk. We can't deny it. The attack has begun. The Honor Guard should realize that we're here momentarily. After that, this area in the town square will be a war zone. Anybody who has an objective elsewhere should be leaving. <clears throat> he says, just as he says that, Pro walks by. Demi calls out his name and he quickly runs over. That's right, he was tasked with causing distraction at the castle. Hey, Damek, I was just about to leave. With Grizz too, I presume? Yes, of course. You know me. I'd never forget anything. You're in for the distraction of a lifetime, Monarch. He. He smirks at me, confident. A confident, cocky smirk. If he followed through, then I'd have. N then I'd have no resistance. It should be smooth sailing when we get to the castle. Hey, Pro. Before you go. He holds out his hand, and it trembles softly. It's been an honor serving with you. I hope I see you again after this is over. He shakes Damik's hand with a firm grip. Trust me, the pleasure has been all mine. And I don't plan on dying. Too much riding to do. His handshake is broken, and they give each other uneasy smiles kind of smile that acknowledges they may never see each other again. Soon after that, Pro is on his is on his way, off to face his fate directly and unafraid. I guess you should get going too, Monarch. Don't worry, I have more protection than I'll ever need. Our rebel forces, the created seers, and the draconic army. No matter what they throw at us, we'll be able to handle it. The true deciding factor in all of this is you and that blade. Be careful, rely on your comrades, and you'll win this for sure. He places a hand on my shoulder. I know you can do this. Now we just need to cause a distraction. All those suits should be focusing on me. If all goes as planned, you should find minimal resistance. Save your strength for the triumvirate. I think you'll need it. Anyway, don't worry about me. I'll have Hal by my side. He looks around, confusion worn on his face. Speaking of which, where is he? He should have been out here ages ago. 
Before he can even respond, I hear loud cracking noise. Turn to see the source. I see the door of the library smashed open. August is shoved through, landing face first on the stone, still tied up. Smoke bellows out of the open door as Hal exits the library. Agus struggles on the ground, squirming like some sort of insect. Uh, did he burn all the books? A blaze, as bright as the sun itself, makes Hal look like a silhouette. Hal, what are you doing? I wonder if I could have changed that by uh, maybe almost killing him. Upon hearing Damick, sips forward and grips Algus by the hair. Raising him to his knees, he looks down in horror at our massive army. It was almost as if, in that moment, he knew he was on the wrong side. We've come here to destroy the Triumvirate and all that they stand for. Don't tell us you're backing down now that the moment is upon us. We all stare in awe as Hal pulls out a dagger, holding it in his free hand. The smoke and the bright illumination reveal to us a frightening fact. Hal torched the inside, burning the books and his culture. No, of course not. I would never give up when we're so close. Come down here, Howell. Explain yourself. Howell shakes his head, disobeying Damic's order. Rain the dagger along August's throat, he then kicks him down the stairs. The trail of blood follows him all the way down, streaming against the cold snow. The monarchy is dead, Dobbock. Do not cling to memories like us. He slowly descends the stairs, the crimson dagger dripping blood. As the flames shoot out of the front door, Hal's face is finally lit up. It appears devoid of all feeling, even after what he had done. Howl, stand down. Damick immediately draws a sword, holding it toward Howl. Stand down. All we've done is carry out our orders. Kill the Triumvirate and their supporters, correct? As their servant, Algus deserves the same fate. Damick's arm trembles, realizing the hell was right. And we needed a beacon to lure the honor guard to the square. A beacon that no matter how hard they try, they cannot put out. Burning the library made sense. They are not permitted inside. Do not mourn for what has already been lost, Damick. The honor guard will be here in just a few moments. Preparing your army would be a much better action. Hal throws the dagger onto the ground. The battle for Alestia has begun. Damik lowers the sword, letting out a loud sigh. Hal was right. August served the enemy, making him an enemy. And the beacon was paramount to our success. It could not be put out. I don't believe this. Hal finally makes it to our location and stands beside us. He shrugs, almost as if this was no big deal at all. Drastic measures must be taken in order to ensure our victory. The writing of a long dead culture is a small price to pay. You should be on your way, Monarch. The time is now. He's right. I had to make my way to the castle. If I use the mountain pass, I should find little resistance. Every suit of armor would soon be on their way to the library. Do not forget Sylvie, either. He volunteered to accompany your group. Make use of the knowledge he has on Baltius. I nod. This was happening so fast, but I could waste no time. We knew this was coming. We knew that we'd have to take action. I start walking away, but Damick calls out to me a moment later. Hey, be careful, okay? I want to see you there when we regroup in the atrium. If all goes as planned, you'll be seeing me there too. I smile and nod. That would have to suffice as a goodbye. After our, I gather up Valesa, Ulrich, Fontaine, and Sophie, we head out. If we hurried, we get through the town square before the suits came. In our haste, we almost say no words to one another. There was a silent agreement that the task at hand was more important, and knowing that any word could be our last, silence seemed more appropriate. Halen knelt before his masters, 
more eager to serve than he had ever been before. He looked up at them, awaiting their orders, perhaps the final orders they'd give. It'd be up to him to lead the honor guard, ensure victory today. Rise, Talon. It seems they seek to deceive us. But it's nothing we haven't seen before. Deception? That seems to be their strength. What will you have me do, masters? Man the atrium. Stay in the castle. We shall let them exhaust their forces for now. When they come here, you can finish them off. You mean to fall into their trap? Doing so would make it our trap, Helen. Besides, their deaths will feed the blade even more. We need it as strong as possible when it is brought back to us. For what reason? Do you doubt us? No, of course not. I was merely curious, that's all. Then your curiosity will have to linger. You have your orders, Halen. Now seek them out. In a few hours, everything should be over for good. Halen wondered, but for what side? Yes, whatever you say. When they arrive in the atrium, Consider them dead. I will paint the walls with their blood, or else besmirch them with my own. Thank you, Halen. Now be on your way. We will send the honor guard to the town square to weaken them. There is no time to waste. The end of everything is upon us. Without a word, Halen is off on his way. In this moment, he truly became the Grand Inquisitor. Last line defense between the Triumvirate and a weak insurrection. The end. Or perhaps another new beginning. Steal yourselves, brothers. You know what's coming. They all look at each other and nod. For the first time in ages, doubt fills their chambers. Thankfully, no one's there to witness such a fault. Pro Grizz enter the Triumvirate's castle, careful not to attract attention. The staircase in the middle is the one that led to their chambers for sure. This meant they'd have to lure the honor guard off to the left or right side. Paths on either side of the stairs lead to the other section of the castle. If Pro had to guess, he'd say they led to the living quarters or practice rooms. Wish her luck. A horde of honor guard was gathering at the base of the stairs. All right, all right. How can we lure them away? Think, Pro, think. You can do this. Not so loud, Pro. We need a plan before they find us. Let's look for something we can use as a distraction. Pro examines the area, noticing large metallic stands holding lit candles. That would for sure be a distraction, but how would he use it? His eyes were drawn to large stained glass windows lining the hall. Hmm. That'll have to do. Come on, Grizz. Let's do this already. Hopefully the monarch isn't too far behind. He starts moving towards the candle holders, but Grizz, gra Grizz grabs his shoulder. No, not that side. It leads to the dining hall and a dead end. You'd only be signing your own death warrant. Pro nods without a word, and they make their way to the other side of the room. They both grab one of the stands and shake off the candle on the other end. It hits the ground, and the wax scatters in almost every possible direction. Hey! Over here! In unison, both Pro and Grizz start breaking the windows with their weapons. The honor guard takes notice immediately and starts sauntering over. Pro grins, laughing softly at how easy it was to distract the suits. Perfect. Now we just need to make a trail. Come on! Don't let us get away! They run down the hallway, shattering window after window, trim of broken glass left behind for the suits to follow after. However, 
They move slow on purpose, keeping an eye on the horde. Hal and Damik stand side by side in the town square of Bolteus. They can hear the sound of Honor Guard marching to their location. Echoes of steel granting against steel. Grating? Assault their ears as they wait. How many do you think there are? Not enough. Well, at least you're confident. Damik brushes some ash off his shoulder. Remnants of the books from the library filled the air. From behind, one of their allies stepped forward. They're almost here. I can tell. Be on your guard. I'll have my men protect you. So can he fly? Yes, of course. I appreciate it. I'll be watching their backs as well. Now, all three of the men are standing side by side. Footsteps of the honor guard got louder and louder. They stepped in unison, sounding like heart beat so fast. That bet beats Reminds me of those drums in the Colosseum. Every time they played, I knew that death would follow. Let's hope that it does, but not for any of us. If we are in danger, do not come to our aid. Especially if it would endanger the lives of others. Remember, by all accounts, we are already dead. Vivian shakes his head. No matter what you say, you're an ally. And believe it or not, I prefer to keep those alive. As long as you breathe, you're living and of use. As they talk, the first honor guard comes into view. One stood in the front of the rest, as if assigning them the role of a leader. It was odd. They all thought such that such mindless suits had a sense of hierarchy. However, there was no time to think about such trivial things. Mere moments later, the rest of the suits gathered behind their leader. On the other side of the town square, Seemed like thousands had arrived. It appears that we may be outnumbered, but remember those things aren't known for their smarts. Each one of us could easily take down a hundred or more. Let's hope that you're correct. Damik gulps and draws his sword. Anybody behind him does the same, and the sound fills the town square. Even from the opposing side, they all can hear the unsheathed blades. Blades. But when everybody is armed, Nothing happens. They stand on opposite sides, both, both forces staring at each other. Damik looks left and right to his allies before speaking out. It appears out. they want us to make the first move. Probably so they can counter. That makes it easier. Just anticipate it, and come up with a counter of your own. Even after his instruction, nobody makes a move. The ash in the air thickens, remnants of the monarchy showering over them. Damik takes a few steps forward and holds out his sword up in the air. We fight to liberate those stuck under the Triumvirate's thumb in the name of all those who have fallen and all those who will come. A new future will dawn here today, one of happiness and peace for all. The soldiers cheer, holding out their swords up in the air as well. But soon after, they fall back down, resting in fighting position. Damik says nothing, simply holding out his sword toward the enemy. And that was enough to spring the army into action. Charging toward the honor guard, steel soon, soon clashes against steel. Screams fill the town square as both sides met and clash in the middle. Damik and Hal remain behind everybody, watching the initial charge. They wait for an ample opening and join the army at the right time. Hal places his hand on Damik's shoulder and gives him a soft nod. Damik, it is time. In response, he gulps and looks up at Hal. Yeah. This is it. He catches a bunch of falling ash in his hand. After looking at it for a moment, he crushes it in a fist. Charge! And a mere seconds later, they're lost in the crowd. We arrive at what seems to be the summit of the mountain pass. Uh, though we look, took the long way around, it could still we could still hear fighting in Bolteus. Soldiers clashing, 
clashing against swords, and the screaming of agony found only in a war. It will spread out as soon as we arrive at the same spot, in. It was a bit ahead of everyone else, so I let them catch up. I was. When they do, Sophie decides to approach me for a chat. We're almost there. It won't be much longer. As soon as we turn the next corner, you'll see the castle. This is probably the best place for Fortem to leave our side. I know his task is dangerous, but I'm sure he'll be fine. I've heard nothing but good things about his ability to climb. I'm more worried about what will happen to us in the castle. I shrug. There really was no way to know. Hopefully, Pro was able to cause his distraction. I normally hate relying on others, you know. In a bind, I can only really count on my own skills. But you and your friends have started to change my mind. We're pressed for time, so I won't draw this out any longer. Just know that I'll have your back in there, as I'm sure you'll have mine. If we make it through this unscathed, I'll know it was a team effort. I nod as Sophie turns away and starts to look around the area. It appears like he's been here before, and finds great comfort in it. A few seconds later, my attention is diverted toward an ecstatic fontaine. Fontaine. Whoa! This is so cool! That statue! I've never seen anything like it! Ulrich, what is it? Do you have any idea? Ulrich turns his face to the large, intimidating statue. Yeah. Alestia wasn't always fully mapped out. This is an artist's depiction of the draconic people. At least, a depiction made in fright during first contact. First contact? Imagine being the first mainlander to arrive in Alarinthia. The people there reacted with hostility, attacking almost instantly. He was an unlucky man, and he fled almost as quickly as he got there. That sounds awful. Yeah. When he got back to Maseo, he told everyone his story. But his account wasn't right. Fear can warp anything you see. Even when he was proven wrong, the design still stuck. They're often used to scare away potential visitors. So it makes perfect sense that there'd be one in a place like this. It's guarding a shortcut that leads right to the Triumvirate's home. Well, it's not gonna scare me away. I have the most important task of all. Nork nods as fun tame quickly walks towards me. I can tell that he's frightened. He looks hopeful as well. I promise you, I'll make it through this. You better be in that atrium waiting for me. No way we're failing now. This is the end. We give each other a quick hug. Perhaps our last hug. He looks around and shakes his head with a loud sigh. Well, I guess I should get going. I need to take a different path than the rest of you. I'm not used to being on my own, but I'll manage. Before he heads out, he hugs Valesa. They share a few words together, and then he's off on his way. His path would lead to the tower, while ours would lead directly inside. I guess we should go too. The sound of all that fighting is really scaring me. One side has to be winning, but which one is it? It's best not to pay it any mind. We have our own task, Valesa. Right, of course. Wanna lead the way? He nods, and then starts walking away from us. We gather together and follow him close behind. We're going to win this. I can feel it. She smiles and offers me her hand. I grab it and hold it as we follow Ulrich. I pray, with every fiber of my being, that she's right. After what seems like an eternity, the Triumvirate's castle comes into view. I'd never been more terrified in my life. The end was finally within reach. The castle looks as corrupt and decaying as everything else. Almost even more so, like it could be the source of all this death. As you get closer, we all look over the exterior, then I see Fortame. He's climbing the tower, just as directed. It's a sight to behold. If he could get to that bell tower, then the war would surely be ours. 
But I see him struggling. A castle is clearly as hard as climb. With no safety nets, any slip would be fatal. I try not to think about it as we arrive at the bridge of the castle. Two. Much to our dismay, the bridge is completely covered in suits of armor. They turn to face us as soon as we approach. A few seconds later, they start to march towards us. They're slow. Our presence took them time to register. Normally, I'd be confident. These things are easy to slay. This was a variable horde. Hundreds, maybe even a thousand. Must have been another group en route to the burning Grand Library. Stay behind me. We can use this bridge to our benefit. They can't get around us or sneak out from behind. It's almost like a funnel. It should be easy. Me and Valesa give Ulrich a firm nod. Sylvie stands by his side. A moment later, in perfect unison, they charge into the crowd. The honor guard stood no chance, not against two former Grand Inquisitors. The suits of armor crumble, crumble and fall across the bridge. As they fight across the bridge, Ulrich's great sword and Sylvie's fists kill almost ten or more each second. However, as I look to the back, I notice a bunch of suits have bows. I shout out to Ulrich and Sylvie, letting them know of the danger. I know, but don't worry, these things have bad aim. Just grab one of those suits and use them as a shield. They'll wear out their numbers by killing their own. I suppose that's a good strategy. After I unsheathe the Blade of Exodus, I step forward. My goal is to find a good opening, so I can hop in and assist them. But no such opening comes. They slay with unmatched expertise. Two fight side by side, as if they're one entity. Perfect synergy. Me and Valesa knows that the archers in the back prepare to shoot. Quick! Grab one! We both rush forward, and each disarm one of the enemies. With no means to fight back, they we hold them in place. Any arrows coming our way would hit them first. Perfect plan, if that's actually what the archers were planning. Much to our shock, as in the chaos on the bridge unfolds, they turn around. They're no longer aiming in our direction, they're aiming straight at for Fortame. For Fortem, look out! Your calls upon deaf ears, so he's too far away to hear. There was no way that any of us would prevent what happened next. They let their arrows fly. Some miss, but one pierces Fortem's side. He immediately starts to lose grip, but it appears he may fall off. There's nothing we could do. We can't just call out to him or get up there to help. I have to do something quickly. They're preparing to shoot at him again. Quick, run along the side of the bridge. It should be wide enough to use as a path. Get back there and take out those archers. I don't take her suggestion to heart. I have my own idea. Running forward and pushing Ulrich and Sylvia out of the way, I ready my sword. They'd pay for hurting my friend. Every single one of them would pay. I thrust the blade through the suits, then look over at Fortame. He looks so weak and delirious. Moments later, he falls off from the tower. The sight alone is enough to fill me with more rage than I ever felt before. Activating the blade, that familiar flash of white light blinds all of us. I can hear my allies struggling, as if they're fighting while blind. But a few seconds later, I hear nothing but shattering of every suit of armor. As the light subsides, we're greeted to the side of victory. Every member of the honor guard on the bridge was dead. I absorbed them into the blade, making it even stronger. Huh? Monarch, did you do that? I nod and tell them I use the emotion side of me as a catalyst. Most of them seem foretame fall, perhaps to his death. We glance over at the tower at the tower though, and I see that I was wrong. He holds onto the edge of a window and struggles to climb inside. So he wanted to drop, to fall to a window, to get inside to safety. You can see that his clothes are covered in blood from the arrow wound. Eventually he makes inside, and we're all relieved. For a few seconds there, it seemed like all hope was lost. Thanks for stepping in like that. My sword arm was starting to get a little tired. Come on, let's get going. We don't have much time. Me, Sylvie, and Ulrich smile at each other. Let's... It's kind of funny. Everybody that I'm kind of like... 
romantically involved with. Melissa, however, has a sh look of shock on her face. Oh, no. We turn to face the same direction as her. He's looking back towards the town square and the bulk of the battle. Another horde is marching in our direction, likely attracted by the light. Just our luck. We all ready our weapons. We watch them walk towards us in unison. With unease in the air, I doubt I could deactivate all of them. I only did... I only did that thanks to the surge of emotion seeing Fortane being shot. It wouldn't be right of me to rely on something like that yet again. Part of me wonders if we should flee inside the, and fight them off in the castle. We have no idea what awaits us inside, or if Pro is even successful. Valesa steps forward, standing in front of us. She trembles, perhaps terrified of what's to come. You need to go. What are you talking about? I said you need to go. Get inside the castle. Help for Tim kill the triumvirate. Just do it. Let me keep them occupied. I'll fight them off. Melissa, that's suicide. We don't have any other option. The monarch needs you and Ulrich. No, I'll stay and fight. I know how those things work. Ugh, this isn't up for debate. You need to go. Now. Sylvie backs down, realizing there's no point. Each second needed to be filled with action, uh, inaction. We wasted time. We just hand victory over to the enemy. Melissa pulls out her mother's daggers with the gulp. I guess taking them from Maseo was a good idea after all. My mind tells me to talk her out of this, but I say nothing. If she fought hard enough, she'd be able to survive. Those suits are weak and mindless. I feel like she'd be okay. I justify her choice in my mind, perhaps because I know it's inevitable. She wraps her arms around me and gives me a tight hug. I return it, and then she looks up at me and kisses my lips. After telling her that I love her, I tell her to stay safe and survive. Is that an order? Yeah. Then I guess I have no choice. <laughs> I love you, Monarch. Never forget that. I'll see you in the atrium when this is all over. And a moment later, we're both off in opposite directions. But as we head towards the castle, I can't help but look back. I'm both worried and hopeful, and both sides were at war. I see her charge into the crowd, holding out her daggers. The sound of her stabbing the suit soon fills the air. They fall apart and hit the ground with loud thuds. Come on, I could do this all day. <laughs> I haven't seen that face before. With a smirk on my face, I realize her victory is clear. Retreat to, into the castle, and the sight makes my jaw drop. The castle is hauntingly beautiful, like nothing I've seen before. As you venture forward, I can only hope Pro was successful. The bell hadn't rung yet, but I have the utmost faith in Fortame's ability. I let out a deep sigh of relief. I'm here, in their castle. This is the end. And with that, I think that's going to be the end of this Let's Play. So anyways, please comment, because I like comments, don't you like, dislike, tips, tricks, always. If you like my YouTube and likes it grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out other videos too. Hope it grow, and please remember to spay your animals to help control the pit population. And until next time, let's say me in Wolf 6 of Winds of Change. See ya.